Welcome to another installment of Yes, We're Here. Meredith Morakovic alongside Yankees pitching coach Matt Blake. Matt, first and foremost, how are you? How's your family? Doing well, doing well. Just trying to settle into this new normal, if you will, uh, up here in Cleveland or just outside of Cleveland, Fairview Park at our, our house here. So just trying to get acclimated to a new routine and uh, try and stay in touch with all the guys as best as we can. Is it difficult to stay in touch with everyone and try to keep somebody on some type of a program? Yeah, I think the staying in touch part's kind of like a traditional off season in the sense of, you know, everybody's in different locations, just trying to, you know, stay in touch, whether it's text, phone call, you know, centralized document that we've kind of built out to kind of follow what guys are doing. Um, but then the programming part's a little different because it's just usually we work from the end in mind being either spring training or the season and then kind of build a program from there. But we're kind of uh, working with a lot of unknowns currently. So that's a little bit of the challenge. With no start date to circle, like you said, what do you tell the pitchers as far as how much they should be doing right now? Yeah, I think that's where we get to a little bit of the individualized programming and kind of assess, you know, what they have available to them, whether they're in a warm weather state or a cold weather state, they have access to a field or a facility or they're just in their home basement or, you know, trying to figure out what, what they have available and then try and give them a sense of, uh, you know, volume control, intensity control throughout the week and kind of try and wave that up and down so that they get some level of stress on their body, but not too much. So it's kind of a delicate balance given that we don't really know what we're shooting for right now. Are there guys that don't have the ability to throw at all right now based on the conditions? So we haven't run into that yet. Um, pretty much everybody has something they can do, whether they've got, you know, some people around them to throw it, they've got a facility to throw at, you know, I, th I haven't really run into anyone that can't do something to prepare themselves. So we're, we're fortunate in that sense. Now, we spoke a lot during spring training about some of the advancements with the technology I know some guys really took to that. Have they set up their cameras at home? And are you looking at stuff from that perspective? Or is it more kind of rudimentary right now? Yeah, right now it's a little rudimentary. Um, we're definitely staying in touch as far as what they should be doing from, uh, you know, if they're working on something in particular, we're staying in touch on that, whether it's their delivery or a breaking ball or something of that sort. But we haven't got to the point where we're using, you know, any of the high-speed cameras or anything. I know Britt will have that available to him at his house, so he's fortunate in that way. And then uh, Otto and those guys up in New York will have some access to technology. And then from there, we'll kind of piecemeal it together. How odd has this all been for you? This is uncharted territory for pretty much everyone involved here with what's unfolded. But for you personally, a big new job, excited to get the season started, and now the pause button has been pushed. Yeah, I would say first and foremost, obviously weird in the sense that it's just a you know, crazy scenario that obviously none of us have seen before. And then when you factor in this is your first year as a major league pitching coach and you know, all of a sudden the script's been thrown out, you know, I think on those – loosely joking with Booney the other day is that at least it takes the experience equation away from everybody else so we're on a level playing field so you can have a silver lining in that way but yeah it is definitely a little strange. How often do you interact with Boone and interact with the front office during this time? Yeah, Booney and I probably stay in touch every day or every other day via you know, phone call text you know what have you just updates from guys and he's been playing catch with Garrett so he's been giving me feedback on what what it looks like and I'm giving him tips on how to catch it better and so he doesn't hurt his palm playing catch with him uh, but and then the front office kind of checks in here or there and it, it kind of gives us an opportunity to you know connect with some other guys you know in the office in the scouting department in the player development so I think right now everybody's looking for a, a sense of connection and a little bit of normalcy so you know even just reaching back out to some of the guys from Cleveland just to kind of just stay in touch with baseball people and try and you know centralize your thoughts around you know what's going on. You mentioned Garrett Cole, and from a starting pitcher perspective, how much time do you think these guys will need to get stretched out again once things are underway? Yeah, I think that's the million dollar question right now. I think depending on what they have available to them and, you know, at home and their ability to, you know, throw bullpens, potentially face hitters, I think that the minimum for me would be three weeks. You know, if you go bef below that, you really put a lot of guys at risk of, you know, hurting themselves. I think three weeks we can do something manageable and, you know, Booney and I were kicking around some different schedules. I, if you could get four, I think we'd feel a lot better about that, but obviously we'll, we'll kind of answer the bell when it comes 
comes, I think everybody will be excited to get going. But I do think that three weeks is kind of a, a window where we can take like that first seven to 10 days. It's kind of that danger zone, if you will, where we can kind of assess where guys are at, you know, have them throw a bullpen, give them a chance to get to a live VP for us, our own guys, and then see how the stress is kind of responding you know, for each guy and go from there. I think at that point, we, we have a pretty good window of two weeks to face other teams. Do you think roster composition to start the season is going to have to be a little bit different because some of these pitchers may not be completely ready? And are you concerned that there could be more injuries this year because of the stop and start nature of what's happened? Yeah, I think both of those are real possibilities of expanding the roster. I just don't see a scenario where you have your starters ready to go, you know, 85 pitches, 90 pitches out of the gate. So, you know, with them being condensed and potentially limited off days, uh, you obviously would need to open it up to some extent. Um, I think we've kicked around, you know, 15 pitchers would be a nice starting point for the conversation. Um, and obviously you'd start to test your depth early in, in the season in that way. But I think we feel good about that on our end. Um, and then the injury side is definitely uh, a real concern for a lot of people, you know, because spring training is always the time of year where you're nervous about guys ramping up too quick. And, you know, you don't really see it as much on the pro side where you kind of have a, a pretty smooth ramp up and then guys just go. You see it more on the amateur side in high school and college where they're changing seasons, whether it's fall to winter and then ramp up for the spring or guys go on to showcases. So we've got a little bit of experience of kind of navigating some uncertain waters in that way. But I do think there's a real concern of guys ramping up a higher intensity than they're prepared for. So that's where the communication is so important right now. One guy that looked like he was going to miss the first couple months of the season was James Paxton. He did start his throwing program. How is that progressing? And do you have any idea when he could be ready? Should there be baseball soon? Yeah, actually, we feel really good about James. The fortunate part when things kind of slowed down and we got a chance to stay around Tampa a little bit longer is that he had started his throwing program and we got to kind of watch him go through the early phases of it and you know it's a little different than a normal arm injury where guys are kind of feeling their way through some of the early phases of the throwing program he obviously had the back surgery and the arm was not an issue so he actually came out of the gates in a really good spot with his throwing program so you know before the, the stoppage, we were targeting kind of that mid-May timeline for him to be around five innings. So, you know, outside of that, I think we've kind of slowed the tempo down just a little bit, you know, given traveling back to Wisconsin and things of that nature. But, you know, I would say given where we're at, I would think that he was likely ready for the season whenever it starts. Seems like there are a lot of moving parts on your end, trying to fit that jigsaw puzzle together and make sure guys are continuing to train in some capacity. Aside from that, what have you been doing to pass the time? Yeah, so outside of, uh, you know, checking in with the guys and staying in the loop with, you know, everything that's going on, we've been obviously the same as everyone else, kind of figuring out the depths of Netflix and HBO on demand, things of that nature. So I've learned to really value walking the dog, uh, things, of that, things like that. And uh, uh, to, to note, we are uh, first in the American League East in my MLB The Show franchise. So we've got that going for us. There you go. There, that's something, I guess. I heard you've been doing or you had done some home improvements, too. It looks like uh, a great backdrop so, behind you. Yeah, so actually behind us is a shiplap wall that uh, my girlfriend and I did last fall. So uh, she's actually the handy one. I just kind of end up being uh, basically her support system. So, you know, we've got a nice setup in the garage with all of our power tools that she kind of you know, leads the way. And luckily my dad's handy. So we refer to him for a lot of our questions. But yeah, it's uh, one project after another around here. So glad that she yeah, leads the charge there. And what's next on Netflix? I know people are starting to run out of shows to watch already. Yeah, we're on Ozark season three right now. And I think we're all heavily anticipating the, uh, the Jordan documentary that's going to come out of the Bulls documentary in mid-April. So we're all, we're all happy to see that coming April 19th. And there was, was there anything that you made sure you had at your home before you self-quarantined? Well, um, we definitely got a, a, a round of athletic greens, which is a, a drink that we all were taking to kind of stay healthy during Tampa, uh, during the end of that. And uh, other than that, it's been, you know, pretty loose around here, just trying to, you know, stay calm with everything that's going on and stay in touch with people and, you know, try and stay busy for the most part. Do you have a message, Matt, for Yankees fans that realize this is bigger than baseball, but they still miss their Yankees baseball? 
I think we're all, you know, feeling the same things they are. You know, I think everyone was really excited for the season and, you know, this being my first kind of feeling the, the excitement at GMS and in Tampa and feeling the support they were giving us. Uh, I know this is a little bit of a, a pause for, you know, things bigger than baseball, but we're, we're anticipating coming back this year and giving them something to root for and some positive, you know, light in their, in their lives. So hopefully we can get to that point and, uh, you know, gives us something to look forward to. Well, hopefully we are back soon. Fans want it. You guys want it. We want it. But most of all, we want everybody to be safe Absolutely. and be healthy if they can be. Matt, thanks for the time. All right. Thanks, Meredith.